back. Back again. Raptor's back. And so is Kano, but we kind of knew that for a while ever since the Brazilian reveal event. But you know what? He's still here, he is still awesome, and he is still very Aussie, I might say. I cannot do an Australian accent for the life of me. I am... I'm of Scottish heritage, and I live in Canada. Doing an accurate Australian accent aside from going crikey, mate, is something I'm not very capable of. And that just kind of sounded like a mixture of Sylvester Stallone and Sylvester the Cat. Anyhow, Dino Dudes, welcome back to another episode of Raptors Combat Corner. And I realized something after I was looking over the Cassie Cage episode. Well, the one that hasn't come out yet. I've been doing these all wrong. I'm going into these um, combat casts or combat corners and trying to break everything down in terms that honestly don't mean a lot to most of you. See, when I look at this gameplay, I'm trying to analyze what makes the fighters good from their actual frame rates and stuff like that. And I think most of you who do watch these, or just watch me in general, you watch to hear my reactions and my thoughts. I've been trying to go far too in-depth with all of these. So starting now, it's going to be less about, you know, frame distances and uh, grapple and like toesies and all this fighting term stuff. It's just going to be much more about what I think about the character, what their special moves are, what I think looks good, and what I doesn't don't think looks good. Okay? Can we all work with that? I really hope so because, well, I'm going to be doing a bit of more of a mix of these now. One sec. You know, nothing like some fresh orange juice to really kind of get your brain going when you're talking about a fighting game. Anyhow, so our favorite Asian slash Australian uh, mercenary is back. If you don't know what I mean by that, this is actually kind of a fun fact. Kano in the first game, and second I believe, it's not totally clear, was actually of Asian descent. But after he was played as a, uh, Aus played in Australia by an Australian dude in the Mortal Kombat movie, Netherrealm enjoyed that so much that they retconned his backstory to make him Australian. Frankly, he's much funnier as an Australian guy, he's just got so much charm and personality, and much like Johnny Cage, this really brings it out. Like the new trailer, just everything they've done with him is so great. He looks like another fun character I can't wait to get my hands on. Now the best way to describe Kano, and this is the best way to describe him both as a character and thankfully as a fighting game character, is dirty. And I'm not talking like, oh, you know, he's a mercenary, he kills for money. I mean, like, stab you in the back, wears stomping shoes, dirty. Like, kick you when you're down, throw dust in your eyes, insult your mother, and then laugh at you as when you get angry. All of Kano's moves that we've seen so far, while they, I think he actually might be the most uh, combo-based character, or have the most combos aside from Jade, he's very much about fighting dirty, from throwing chemicals and lighting you on fire, to straight up spitting on you, to kicking you when you're down, or just prison shanking you. But we'll get to that in a bit. His basic moves are pretty interesting, because it seems like, according to the guys in the combat cast, he's great up close, and thanks to his trademark Kano Ball, which is thankfully back. But then again, I don't think Netherrealm Studios would be stupid enough to not put that in the game. But I'm just saying, thank you for bringing it back. He actually is not much of a mid-range fighter, but much more a close-up fighter who likes to try and keep people from getting into their mid-range. So that's an interesting thing. While he is he would very much be a hack and slash button masher kind of character, there also is a little bit of strategy as to trying to keep your opponent from being able to, you know, get into their zone, therefore making it harder for them to fight you. And yeah, while Mortal Kombat 11 certainly does seem to kind of take a little bit of the edge off of Mortal Kombat X in terms of professional fighting styles or, you know, much more like evil style uh, fighting, I'm okay with that because it seems like, while it is still very much like, well, strategically based, it also doesn't lose any of its fun of being just a straight up uh, button masher game you can play with your friends. Now, what am I talking about fighting dirty? Well, have a look at some of his moves. Pro is the so, same thing. So you can just ball all over him. That triggers the crushing blow. If you read they're going to do a wake up high projectiles, oh. and it covers a lot of range. Now, damage, and they actually have armor. Ooh, boy. Ooh. So. And then he has a bottle of bleach. 
Throws a cigarette oh lighter and lights you on fire. He is a nasty. Oh. Does the does the, does the bottle of uh, the the. Yeah, this dude, like I said, he's lighting you on fire with chemicals, cage match wrestling beating you into the ground, using what I'm now going, what I refuse to stop calling stomp and chews, in a mix of a bit of a British Australian accent that sounded horrible. Uh, but yeah, he literally has knives in his boots. Brings a whole new meaning to there's a snake in my boot. My snake, I mean a prison shiv that he will use to stab you in the throat. I can't even get mad because this is literally who Kano is as a character, and it's glorious. The guy voicing him is clearly having so much fun, but not only that, he still does get to keep some of his more well-known moves. Like I said, the Kano ball is back, he can throw his knives, but he can still use his awesome cybernetic eye to shoot lasers. And you know, that's something again I'm glad they kept. Apparently, part of the customization, you can actually change not only his clothing and even make him bald look like his old Mortal Kombat looks, including Mortal Kombat 1 and 3 from what we've seen so far, but you can actually change his face sort of to change how the eye looks. And yeah, even with the eye beam you can even launch a chest attack sort of to create fire for DO damage over time, or as its short form is DOT. For anyone out there who doesn't know exactly what that means, well now you know. Yeah, but he can shoot lasers, throw knives, and use some very cheap kicking tactics. And I do mean cheap. But trust me, you do not want to call you don't want to call him out on that. Otherwise, he'll use his his uh, fatal blow on you. Trust me, it's one of the more ugh, ones. Here, hold this. Do you see what I mean when I say he fights dirty? He literally just kicks you in the ribs when you're down, not for any reason other than he wants to. His crushing blows all seem really good, the only thing about him I don't actually like all that much is his fatality, the one we've seen so far. Now this has been kind of a weird thing, but Kano has never really gotten the best fatalities out of the game, and while it's certainly not bad, I kinda almost hope for more. Now, maybe it'll grow on me in time. That's kind of what been, what's been happening with Sonya Blade's voice, so I kind of, again, have to wait and see how it finally ends up. But, yeah, can't wait to play Kano. Really, the only character I kind of have real issue with is the one I'll be doing next, who I accidentally spoiled at the beginning of this video. So, yeah, Dino Dudes, if you're excited to play Kano or just to play Mortal Kombat 11 in general, leave a like, go down to the comments, let's talk Mortal Kombat, let's talk fighting games. I want to just kind of get a conversation going, you know? Make sure you're subscribed, that way you can stay up to date with all the new reviews coming out, including a ton of video game reviews, and other movie reviews. I'm going to be heading back to the good old sci-fi channel soon, got some uh, monster films lined up that should be good for a laugh or two, or a groan or two, or both. Yeah, probably both. Anyhow, one other thing, I want to give them two shoutouts real quick. One to the Heatley Brothers, or I can't, don't know if you had how you pronounce your names or not, but the music you've been hearing in the background, they made. They make a bunch of royalty-free 8-bit music you can use so long as you credit them. I love their stuff, and it, 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 it works, you know? It's just nice to have in the background for these videos. Sometimes it fits better than others, but... I certainly think it sounds better than just listening to me with very quiet punching and kicking in the background. And secondly, once again I'd like to give a huge shout out to Miss Luca Bacchino, who is the amazing woman who has designed the cartoon raptor you see on all my thumbnails now, as well as the logo. Uh, not the combat corner part, I did that and I put everything together, but as for the uh, uh, channel banner, which I'm currently editing to a different size and working on that, the logo and the cartoon version of me, she was responsible for all of that. And in every video, I have linked you to her DeviantArt uh, page. Please go over there, commission her to do some work. She's a great artist, and she's a very nice person. With that being said, this is going to be all for this episode of Raptors Combat Corner. Every day I get more and more excited, and each week I get more and more pumped for these combat casts. So until next time, this has been the Meteor Raptor saying keep cool, and I'll see all you dino dudes around. Later, mate.
Crikey. I would like to apologize to anyone from, from Australia who is watching this video. I know that was probably incredibly offensive somehow by how pathetically bad that was. I do apologize. But know that I don't care all that much. Just kidding, I care a lot.